Magical Hall of Fame where you can make each other disappear. It's all in the fun. It's an illusion. Once he had become famous, Houdini's image as the premier escapologist in the world was continually threatened by competitors intimately close to his mother. Houdini was shattered by her untimely death in July of 1990. I got a two for one deal in the For adults, a family deal is ten. World of magic and mystery, which is unlike anything you've ever seen before. It is here that many of magic's most amazing and carefully guarded secrets are revealed for the very first time. And together with fascinating glimpses of the many famous men who have thrilled the world with their memorable miracles, these wonders create a magical adventure. We trust you will enjoy. Established in 1968 as a tribute to the memory of Harry Houdini, the museum is dedicated to the commemoration of Magic's most illustrious career. This career began on March 24, 1874, in Appleton, Wisconsin, where a son was born to Rabbi Samuel Weiss and his wife Cecilia. The infant was named Eric, but 17 years later he would choose to change that name to and to embark on his lifelong journey as an illusionist and as a It was tough going in the beginning, working in beer halls at dime museums and with traveling circuses for a mere $5 per week. 
not to speak of the lack of recognition and appreciation which impassive employers had for his talent. It was during this period, and while performing at a dime museum at Coney Island, that Harry Houdini and Beatrice Martin. They were married on July 22, 1894, and Bess, as Houdini called his bride, became an integral part of the act. The metamorphosis illusion highlighted their repertoire, but it didn't overly impress anyone, and Houdini knew that he would have to develop unique and very exceptional elements of showmanship to achieve the recognition and start he longed for so intensely. More than anything, it was his burning desire for fame and fortune that prompted the development of his skills with handcuffs, padlocks, manacles, and locks. Combined with the early training he had received as a locksmith's apprentice, he would continue to add to his collection of locks and keys and to expand his knowledge in this area to such an extent that there was hardly a handcuff, padlock, manacle, or lock he could not open. Years of study, an exceptional mind, superior dexterity, a superbly trained and powerful body were all critical for his mastery of his own reputation and his eschatology. An enormous ego and an overwhelming determination to succeed were all that we need to complete the requirements which would catapult his career and establish his legendary status. At home, fame and fortune had continued to elude Houdini. His escapes and challenges did not appear to excite the American public. So in 1900, he $50 in cash, a one-way ticket, his vast knowledge of locks and keys, and his finely tuned physique, Houdini set sail for Great Britain. In London, he implemented the escape challenge formula that had ignored his quest for recognition in his home. He took on one of the most distinguished and reputable law enforcement agencies in the world, Scotland Yard. Manacled with a pair of the Yard's best fail-safe handcuffs, he completely astonished and surprised the officials who had witnessed his escape. His unprecedented event also provided one of the most fascinating news stories of the day. Newspapers all over the world headlined this remarkable thing, and overnight, the was transformed from a five-dollar a week dime museum performer to an artist earning $1,800 a week, demanded by the finest theaters in Europe. Capitalizing on his escape challenge formula and inventing progressively more difficult escape situations, Houdini engineered the police forces, armies, and navies of France, Germany, Britain, and Russia into creating the universally publicized notion that he had supernatural powers. Most important of all, the recognition and acceptance of the American audience, which he had strived so very long and hard to win, was finally his. Once he had become famous, Houdini's image as the premier escapologist in the world was continually threatened by competitors who duplicated his beats. This inspired him to develop an endless number of new and death-defying escapes. His acute awareness of the value of publicity and of the need to satisfy the public's appetite for thrilling and dangerous exploits, coupled with his creative genius, originated literally hundreds of escape challenges. Jails, ropes, chains, Handcuffs, leg irons, safes, straitjackets, packing cases, coffins, and icy rivers. They represent just some of the many vehicles he used to become the greatest escapologist of all times. There was nothing from which Houdini could not escape. Intimately close to his mother, Houdini was shattered by her untimely death in July of 1913. He canceled all of his appearances and began a morbid vigil at the graveside. Curious about death and the great mystery, Houdini began to contemplate the methods which might pierce the veil between life and death. Spiritual as he was in fashion, and in his desperate desire to believe in contact with the world beyond, Houdini began to retain spiritual meanings of having to communicate with his beloved mother. Everywhere he went, by virtue of his extensive knowledge and ability, he found a cheap trickery being used to do things and three people who simply wanted to contact with their departed loved ones. Sickened by what he found, and considerably smarter than any meaning of the method of deception and use, Houdini waged a vengeful war in exposing spiritual mediums everywhere. His acute sense for the value of publicity prevailed as before, and he gained excited attention from the press, dominating headlines of the day. About a year after his mother's death, Houdini detected a wave in the golden age of life and a surge of public interest in a new form of entertainment called film. In short order, he acted in several serial segments and produced a film called The Man from the Young, an interesting reflection of his preoccupation with life after death.
Although his film career was a financial disaster, Houdini performed all of his own stunts. In The Man from Beyond, he nearly lost his life at Niagara Falls. Houdini returned to the stage with a major North American tour in 1926. As if he had had a premonition this would indeed be his final tour, it was billed as the farewell tour. He collapsed while performing on stage in the truck and died there 10 days later at Grace Hospital. It was Halloween's Eve. Houdini was buried near his mother at Mount Pollock Cemetery in Queens, New York. In life, Houdini earned a living escaping from walks and chains. He became a legend showing us that limits of any kind are illusions. Houdini captured our hearts by breaking free from poverty and gravity, as well as from the bonds of steel and iron. He personified the great escape and demonstrated to us that nothing is impossible. Enjoy your mystical, magical visit to the Houdini Magical Hall of Fame, and thank you.
cremation, one of the most astounding effects achieved at the turn of the century was Sir Vias Leroy's cremation. Leroy was a famous Belgian revolutionist who amazed people in England, Australia, and America. In his cremation, a hypnotized girl was lowered into a coffin and vanished in a flash, while in her place remained a flaming skeleton. The equipment seen here is the original, however, the effect is still featured by the famous Russian revolutionist Kiev, who is performing with Moscow service. Oh. Oh. Alive, thank you. A knot that unties itself that becomes alive. And uh, perhaps you would like to try one. Time we have together before I turn you into a rabbit. Time to <laughs> How many did you tie? Two. Did you learn to count? I count three. Oh, there's three. Well, there they are, all tied together. And I'm untying these. Faster. Faster than you can say, Blackstone. Too late. After the applause of Too late. I will now change it into a spook and show you a real live one. A spook with muscles. Very rare.
Instead, he discovered that the use of the trick that was trying to do Many people, including Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, believe that Houdini possessed supernatural powers, which he used to affect his escapes. Such was not the case, and Houdini vehemently denied it. As a matter of fact, he said that anybody with proper training, know-how, skill, courage, and perhaps 10 or 15 years of practice could duplicate his feats. One of these devices was a crucifix, a wooden cross, in which many spectators would come up, tie up Houdini with his wrists and his neck thoroughly in any which way that they wanted. Yet Houdini had the ability to escape instantaneously. Let me show you. After being securely tied as I am now, a screen would be pulled in front of Houdini, and almost as fast as the screen was pulled, Houdini was free. The secret of this ingenious device is right here. When Houdini wished to effect his escape, his heel was placed on this device and he pushed down. Simultaneously with this heel action, three very sharp razor blades would come right down and cut the rope. so that anybody with proper training, know-how, skill, courage, and perhaps 10 or 15 years of practice to duplicate the scene. One of these devices was a crucifix, a wooden cross, in which many spectators would come up, tie up the meeting, or the wrist, the neck, or the end of which way they wanted. And the meeting was really to escape instantaneously. Let me show you how it works. Houdini morbidly contemplated the great mystery between life and death. Houdini visited the gravesite daily, desperately hoping for some revelation. He sought to penetrate the veil between life and death, and began his determined mission to find a spiritual medium who could provide some revelation. He sought to penetrate the veil between life and death. Began his determined mission to find a spiritual meaning to supply the bridge to the world beyond. And more importantly, dear instead he discovered that the use of triggers in his remedy had that cruel and harmful deceit where the appalling force of the seance was so fast to the His exposure. In September of 1915, Houdini was trapped in a straight jacket. Hung upside down in the hole at the top of the post office in Kansas City. This new twist added a thrilling to the down straight jacket as was repeated in Victoria, Toronto, Boston, and New York City in the future of Haiti. Literally hundreds of thousands marked him. And once again, Haiti's competitors had the reference to match or exceed his comments. Made a very well appearance with the men of Houdini's competitors. In September of 1915, Houdini was strapped in a straitjacket and hung upside down from a pole at the top of the post building in Kansas City. This new twist added a total dimension to the regular straitjacket escape, which mesmerized thousands of spectators and gained national attention. The upside down straitjacket escape was repeated in Pittsburgh. Toronto, Boston, and New York City, to mention a few. 
literally hundreds of thousands marveled at. And once again, Dini's competitors and the reference to match or exceed his powers. Houdini developed his regular straight jackal escape at the turn of the century. The huge public response to this escape made it a very popular escape for many of Houdini's competitors. In September of 1915, Houdini was strapped in a soap in Boston and New York City to let you appear. Literally hundreds of thousands of marked that night. And once again, Houdini's competitors and the records to... Houdini's is an original letter from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle to Yeah, very, very, very. We'll come back. Yeah. 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 Then he wrote 10 code words, which I have in my pocket, and the combination of those 20 words, the 10 word circle and the 10 words in my pocket, make up the secret message, which will come back if Houdini comes back. Houdini believed that if anybody could come back after that, it would be he. In this envelope is an original letter from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle to Houdini, where Houdini took ten words in that letter and circled the ten words. Then he wrote ten code words, which I have in my pocket, and the combination of those twenty words, the ten word circle and the ten words in my pocket, make up the secret message which will come back here. In this envelope is an original letter from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle to Houdini, where Houdini took ten words in that letter and circled the ten words. Then he wrote ten code words, which I have in my pocket, and the combination of those twenty words, the ten word circle and the ten words in my pocket, make up the secret message which will come back if Houdini comes back. Houdini believed that if anybody could come back after death, it would be he.
combination of those 20 words, the 10 words circled and the 10 words in my pocket, make up the secret message which will come back if Houdini comes back. Houdini believed that if anybody could come back after death, it would be me. In this envelope is an original letter from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle to Houdini, where Houdini took ten words in that letter and circled the ten words. Then he wrote ten code words, which I have in my pocket, and the combination of those twenty words, the ten words circled and the ten words in my pocket, make up the secret message which will come back if He died on Halloween's Eve, October 31st, 1926. He was buried in the coffin which he had used for his Buried Alive challenge. Under his head, a stack of letters he had received from his mother and saved on the pillow. In death, he had never lost hope that there was life after death. In death, he claimed that if the veil between life and death could indeed be pierced, he would do so. This hope still lingers after him, and efforts to contact him on each anniversary of his death have persisted for more than half a century. Are you here? Are you here, Houdini? Please manifest yourself in any way possible. Bessie is here. Your Bessie, who was part of you for 33 years. It means so much to her, to all of us, to the world. The world is listening. Harry, your world, your audience, take from this furnace gathering any strength that may be necessary for you to use. Take any vital thing from us that you may need to enable you to carry out your promise of years ago. We have waited for you so long. We are watching and waiting, Harry.